Welcome back. This is uh, Blacklight Master 10.4a slope of a speed time graph. So it should look like this. So this time we're not looking at a distance time graph, we're looking at a speed time graph. Now a couple of things here. With MW4 you would have done two laps. One involved uniform motion. In other words, constant speed, which we'll take a quick look at, and another one in which we involved non-uniform motion. And that one was acceleration. Yeah, I spelled that incorrectly there. Acceleration. There we go. Now, an interesting thing with this one is that we would have had a distance. I'll get a little funky here, move that like that. Oops. So the distance time graph for uniform motion is simply a straight line. And then as we saw before, if we figure out the slope of that line, we would get a constant speed value. So it looks something like this. Okay, When you did the lab involving an acceleration, uh, that cylinder rolling down the, the two by fours there, we had, uh, let's see, we had a distance time graph that looked more like this. It is a curve shape. And if we take a look at that, it's kind of hard to figure out the slope of that. We'd have to figure out the slope of a bunch of places. But we automatically plotted a speed time graph and it looked something like that. Increasing speed. So if you're going at a constant speed, a straight line graph for distance time giving a constant speed. If it's acceleration, it's a curve distance time graph given a increasing speed time graph. So that's kind of an aside, kind of a review of what we looked at earlier. Now, if we look at a, the slope of a speed time graph this time, take a look here. We'll have meters per second over seconds, meters per second per second, or meters per second squared, and of course, that is acceleration. So the slope of a speed time graph gives you acceleration. So if we're going to take a look at various things that could happen here, if we're given speed time graphs, graphs would show how fast we're going. If it's a straight line like that, uh, which has a fairly large slope, remember slope is acceleration. So in this case we have a high positive slope which is high positive acceleration. Low positive acceleration goes along with low positive slope. And if we have zero slope, a flat horizontal line, that means there is no slope, that means no acceleration. It's zero. So that means you're not speeding up, you're not slowing down, you're going at a constant speed. Okay, so that's what zero acceleration indicates. And then over here, if we get a negative slope, that means it's negative acceleration. Or, in layman's terms, we think of that as deceleration. Accelerating, decelerating, slowing down into a stop. Okay, so speed time graph, giving you uh, those results there. So slope of the speed time graph, gives the acceleration. If we go into the next page, uh, a speed time graph also gives us something else. If we look at specifically the area under the speed time graph. Okay? So if we take a look here, um, we have this graph, a boat on, a Saint, on the St. Lawrence River. We can see it's going at a constant speed of 30 kilometers per hour for a total time of 1.5 hours. 
Now, I'm not sure if you have this worked out. I don't think you do on your sheet, so you may want to add this in if you don't have it. A boat on the St. Lawrence River tra travels at full throttle for 1.5 hours from the area determine the distance traveled. So in this case, area gives distance. Okay, so the area underneath gives distance. Now if we take a look here, what this really is, is a rectangle. And of course to figure out the area of a rectangle, area is equal to length multiplied by width. So whatever we can choose there, length, width, we have 1.5 by 30. And if we take a look here, Area is equal to uh, width times length, or length times width. Uh, 30 kilometers per hour multiplied by 1.5 hours gives you 45 kilometers because the hours cancel. You can't quite see that there. Area is equal to length times width. 30 kilometers per hour multiplied by 1.5 hours. So hours and hours cancel, we're left with kilometers, so 45 kilometers. Got a little funky there with the 5. Okay? What if it doesn't make that shape, though? If you take a look here, if, some, if an object is accelerating, it has an increasing speed versus time graph. So in this case, we'd be looking at the area under that line, and of course that forms a triangle. And the area of a triangle, if you recall, is half of the base multiplied by the height. So if we take a look here, the base is six seconds. The height, if we're looking after six seconds, which I think this question is, uh, it's around 7.2 meters per second. So over here, area is equal to half the base multiplied by the height. Um, so in this case, one half of 6.0 seconds multiplied by 7.2 meters per second. So we can see seconds and seconds cancel. We're going to be left with meters. So half of 6 multiplied by 7.2, that gives you 22. And in this case, the unit is going to be meters, indicating a distance. So based on this, we have that happening. So, the slope of a speed time graph gives you acceleration. The area underneath the speed time graph gives you distance traveled.